What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and I am super excited to announce that I'm going to be recording a short tutorial series on how to create a true first-person shooter in Unreal Engine 5 using a metahuman. So as you can see here, we've got quite nice looking hands, quite a nice looking full character model, in fact. Uh, we've got turning in place, we've got directional movements, and crouching and jumping and whatnot. Uh, I'm also going to be showing you how to implement an inheritance-based weapon system. So it really works quite nicely. Um, you can reference whatever weapon you're desiring to pick up or switch to at any point. So it allows you to set up different animations in the animation blueprint, depending on which weapon you're holding, whether that be the pistol or the assault rifle, or whichever weapon, uh, you know, you want to implement. Um, another thing I'm going to be showing you, which I'm quite excited about and I think you might like, is a armor style aiming dead zone system. So as you can see here, the aiming is not locked to the middle of the screen. We're able to move around the screen and when we release it, it returns back to the shooting from the hip position. Um, I just think this adds a little bit more depth uh, to the first person shooter format and also think it's quite cool um, as you can see this is clamped so uh, it's unable to move outside of the bounds of the screen it's also set up to work in conjunction with variable uh, sensitivity uh, variables so when I'm aiming from the hip the sensitivity is higher uh, than when I'm aiming down the sights and this is all set up to work in conjunction with uh, this aiming dead zone system. Uh, you can also uh, customize this so that the values are different for example for the assault rifle uh, to what they are for the pistol so you can see this this one is clamped more tightly because I just think it makes more sense. Realistically the assault rifle has a less range of motion than a pistol for example. Uh, you can also see we've got some nice weapon sway when aiming down the sights here and then some bob when we're moving which will blend depending on how fast we're moving. Um, we're also going to be implementing some cool stuff like drawing the line trace from the actual barrel of the weapon so that uh, the, the bullet will go wherever the weapon is pointing. If you happen to mash fire and uh, try to fire while the gun is recoiled that bullet will just go up uh, so yeah what we might do is just jump into some project setup and change a few initial settings and uh, we'll cap this video off there okay for the record guys i am using unreal engine 5.2.0 the most recent version as of the date of recording this video we're going to create a new project using the first person template, leave everything as default, and I'm just going to call this MetaHuman True FPS and hit create. Once the editor has loaded, we are going to open up Quixel Bridge, head on down to the MetaHumans tab, and select our character. Now, when selecting character, guys, um, we are making a true first person shooter, so our aim is not to hide the torso or the legs or anything like that. But uh, just in case you, uh, you might end up wanting to do that, you want to be wary as to what uh, metahuman you use. Uh, the metahuman's wearing long sleeves. Their uh, top that they're wearing is actually their torso. So if you hide the torso, you also hide the arms. Uh, with that in mind, um, you, you at least want to select a metahuman that's using the metahuman base skeleton in case you do want to swap it out later. Um, all of the animations and whatnot will apply to um, you know any any metahuman that's using the metahuman base skeleton. Um, I'm going to use a metahuman with uh, that's wearing short sleeves just in case. Um, I want to you know just change this to a regular first person shooter later on. Um, but you know, with the added benefit of there actually technically being a full, full body uh, skeletal mesh there that can draw shadows, 
So I'm going to give you a list of eight metahumans that are using the metahuman base skeleton but are also wearing short sleeves. Um, you've got Chandra, Etor, Kalan, Lena, Orla, Oscar, Trey, and Jen. I'm going to use uh, just the first one, Chandra. It's got quite nice hair, quite a nice groom going on. Hit export. Once it's exported, you'll be prompted to enable some missing plugins. Enable all missing plugins. And when prompted, restart the editor. Once the editor's restarted, you can close Quixel Bridge. We don't need that anymore. Open up the first person uh, folder here, blueprints and first person character. Also open up the BP first person game mode and down in the metahumans folder open up your metahumans blueprint. This might take a few seconds if it's the first time you've done it. In your metahumans blueprint go to class settings and change the parent class to BP first person character. Grab the body over here and drag it onto mesh. You can delete root. Hit compile and down here in the errors find the one that says target. Click on target. This pin here requires mesh so drag out mesh and hit compile. Let's get rid of these other errors. These require get skeletal mesh asset. Plug that in there and delete the old one. These also require get skeletal mesh asset. Plug it into the same pins here and delete the old one. And your errors are gone. Head to the viewport, click on the body, and zero out the location. And on the third value of the rotation here, just put in negative 90 or 270, whatever floats your boat. We're not actually going to do any live retarget or anything, so we don't need this uh, this mesh from the first person character. Go to the BP first person character and select the mesh and clear that. And also delete the camera just because it's inherited and we won't be able to attach it where we want to attach it. So um, there we go. Those are cleared. The camera's gone. Uh, add a camera component. I'm just going to call this true first person camera. So I'm not a very fast typist. Drag true first person camera onto body and then over here in the details panel change the parent socket to head and zero out the transform doesn't align properly so just make sure snapping is turned on and you're gonna have to rotate it 90 degrees this way and 90 degrees that way and it'll be aligned properly. You'll know it's aligned properly because this gizmo will line up with the X, Y and Z down here. Uh, now just to get this closer to a realistic position change this first value to 6 and the second value to 10 and you can see by where the gizmo is right on the bridge of his nose there that's a very good position um, while we're here we might select the face and everything underneath it search for hidden and hidden in game check this and hidden shadow this allows it to draw a shadow even though it's hidden Uh, what is next? While we're here, just because it's distracting for the hair to appear and disappear, click on LOD Sync and change Forced LOD to 1. We might even later on in the project uh, replace the head and the groom with um, something basic just to draw a shadow and um, something a bit less resource intensive, but just for now it's fine. I'm sure you've all got 
absolute beasts of a rig to run UE5. Um, I've only got a 3070 and a 13900 k and um, yeah, that does quite well. Uh, what is next? BP first person game mode, change the default pawn class to your metahuman. That's all we need to do in there, so you can compile and save that and close that. I uh, don't think we need BP first person character anymore, so you can close that. Um, one other thing I'd like you to do is open up the project settings, search for shadow, and in shadow map method change virtual shadow maps to shadow maps. Virtual shadow maps is just a little bit too re resource intensive, um, so just for the purposes of, you know, um, your machine handling it a bit easy and more easily during development, um, just have shadow maps. Also, there's a bug where metahuman's hair, uh, the shadow of the metahuman's hair seems to disappear when the camera gets too close to a surface. It's really weird and I find it super annoying. I've been trying to find a workaround, um, but I, th I think it's just a bug with virtual shadow maps. If we hit play now, um, we are, ah, well, I forgot one thing. Uh, we do still need the first person character, so I stupidly closed that. In the BP first person character, grab everything out of the event graph, control click event begin play, so we're not taking that, just hit control C, go back to your metahumans event graph, paste this in, grab event begin play and hair lod setup, plug it into cast to player controller. This will give us uh, this will give us the um, input mapping context and also the camera movement, you know, jumping all these controls. Now you'll notice that we can move around and jump and everything, but we can't look up and down. Uh, this is because we are not using if you select the root here and search for controller see here use controller rotation pitch so this basically rotates your character with your um, with your camera input um, oh, this is sorry this is uh, chugging just because I, I haven't got uh, just going to change the max FPS to 60 so I don't break my recording software. Um, so if you're doing just a normal first person uh, shooter, this would be fine because the arms would rotate with the camera. But if I hit F8 and eject here, you'll see that the character is rotating with the camera. Um, that's not actually what we're going for. So we're not going to do it in this tutorial. Um, we're going to leave this unchecked, use controller rotation pitch, and in the next video I am going to show you how to take the, cam the um, camera input, so your mouse input, and use that to rotate the character's spine bones to make him look up and down. Um, and that's about it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching guys, and um, once again I'm super excited about this tutorial series. We're going to do some really really cool shit um, and if you're excited to let me know in the comments section you know what you might want to see included in the series um, what sort of functionality and features um, uh, or even just tell us how excited you are and uh, you know if you're finding any value from these videos and um, obviously please hit like and subscribe it would go a long way I am trying to reach more people and um, hopefully make a bit of a go at this. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.